We've had a lot of looks at the speculative biology of kaiju, so now let's look at the guy that will protect us from them, Ultraman. Hello everyone! Ultraman is a long-running franchise focused on this kaiju-battling superhero, and his long list of powers and abilities, plus the fact that he is very specifically an alien being bonded to a human, should make this something very fun to speculate on in our more alien style. Please ultra beam those like and sub buttons if you like our videos. And now, without further ado, let's get started. With a world under constant threat, humanity has come to thank any and all protectors that may come our way. And when the threats are as titanic as Kaiju can be, an equally titanic protector arose. While at first they were a mystery, as time went on, communication between us became more common, and we've come to understand them to a much higher degree. We've been able to translate their name as Ultras, a name meaning beyond in Latin. We cannot say this name is undeserved at all. These organisms are somewhat similar to gems, in that their external bodies are made of scattered particles and concentrated photons, or as we may also call it, solid light, which is arranged around a central core formed of an inorganic crystalline structure. While their bodies can change form and size to a degree, as would be expected from organisms made of energy, their most basic resting state is simply a ball of organized light, with the body they form to interact with the world usually being around 40 to 50 meters tall, or 130 to 165 feet. The star their system is found in produced massive amounts of energy, comparable to those of R136A1, one of the most luminous stars known, and the Ultra's biology evolved entirely around absorbing and managing these huge amounts of energy. Since then, the energy produced by their star has massively decreased, with the Ultras having managed to replace its output through artificial sources of energy that allow them to remain alive. The reproduction of these organisms is external, with any number of parents using vast amounts of their own energy to condense a new crystalline core from the matter present in their environment, their pre-existing energy signatures being imprinted into this core in the process. In modern times, this is aided by external, technological means. The light and energy that compose the bodies of these organisms is arranged in a series of functional regions, something in between the organs of organisms we are more familiar with and the functional clusters of beings such as Olympians. First, let us study the functional region in charge of containing the organism itself, the skin or armor that covers them. The core of an ultra uses its own electromagnetic properties to create a field around it, composed both of solid light and small amounts of metallic particles, usually the element the ultras know as spatium, and we as iron. Being the most common metal in the universe, and the sixth most common element overall, it is easy for these organisms to find and utilize it. This outer layer will not only hold the rest of the light that composes them, but also attract large amounts of light and energy for the Ultra to feed on. The silver parts of their skin, which contain the highest metal particle concentrations, are arranged to be positioned in the points where photons impact most frequently. The color of the non-silver parts of the armor varies between individuals, resulting from small differences in the composition of the Ultra's core changing the part of the light spectrum they reflect. Both color and total proportion of these areas is affected by these differences, creating variations that are akin to ethnicities in Ultras. Deeper inside of their bodies lie what we call the gravitational clusters, so-called more for their effect than the way they actually work. These clusters concentrate the Ultra's energy to produce a very powerful electromagnetic field, which attracts their body towards nearby matter, creating an approximation to the effects of mass and, therefore, 
of gravitational pull. Their first and main use is allowing these beings to actually stand on solid ground, as well as being selectively used across their anatomy to interact with physical matter. By varying the amount of energy directed to these clusters, the ultras can change the apparent mass and speed at which they move, thus strengthening certain movements for more forceful actions, as well as repelling their surroundings in order to fly at will. They use a similar principle to this by concentrating massive amounts of energy in a single point, creating a controlled wormhole in order to transport themselves to other points in space. However, the massive energy drain this requires means this is rarely used by most Ultras. The energy held within and conforming the skin of an Ultra can be manipulated to a very high degree through the use of these functional zones, not only being moved around to the parts that need it most, but even by expelling it from the body in highly concentrated beams which is done through a series of specialized organs. This is usually done to get rid of potentially harmful excess energy, but can also be weaponized against potential threats. When used as a weapon, this energy discharge is usually shot out of the arms, which are held in a crossed position to help in aiming and stability. Controlled projection of this energy can also be used to project solid light protective force fields protecting their skin layer from harm. Finally, a very specialist electromagnetic organ, similar in principle to the energy expulsion organs, is utilized to produce very finely tuned energy waves, which can be used to communicate soundlessly between members of the species, a process that seems to an external watcher rather similar to telepathy. Ultras are extremely long-lived, with no upper limit to their lifespan being currently known, and deaths by injury or ailment are extremely uncommon. The only known ways that an Ultra can be harmed are either by depriving them from access to a source of energy, or through application of extreme force or concentrated energy, which may cause the light armor holding them to be disrupted, creating tears through which their composing energy leaks out. Luckily, the Ultras do have a way to treat ill or injured individuals through careful, controlled application of energy, using its flow to patch any leaks, reconfigure disrupted functional regions, or simply giving them energy to function appropriately. This is quite critical because, due to our sun producing much less energy than what the Ultras evolved to use, and with our atmosphere filtering out a lot of the energy that arrives to our planet, Energy loss is a great concern for Ultras visiting Earth. Any individuals who do so can spend very little time here, requiring to live often in order to absorb more energy before returning. Amazingly, they have managed to overcome this by bonding with an organism native to the planet they are visiting, including humans which is what led to their discovery by our species. They do this by retracting all of their energy into their crystalline core, before either incorporating this structure into their host anatomy, or simply providing this structure to them. In this state, their ability to sense or interact with the world around them will be severely limited, mostly being able to sense their host alone. They will passively absorb energy with little to no expenditure, remaining in this state until either the host or the Ultra themselves consider the Ultra's presence is required, often done if the host is considered to be in danger. The Ultra will then manifest its solid light body around the host in order to deal with whatever it needs to, being mindful of how much time it has left before running out of energy thanks to their color timer. This functional region acts as an indicator of an Ultra's general well-being, having evolved to aid in intraspecies signaling and cooperation, and works by giving off low amounts of visible light that reflect the current state of the Ultra. When healthy, or with good amounts of energy to utilize, 
the color timer will stay around the blue part of the light spectrum. But as their health worsens or they lose energy, the energy in the photons it produces will decrease, changing it to a red coloration to let the Ultra know it either needs to rest or leave the planet in order to recover. As advantageous as this bond is to both organisms involved, its closeness can also come to harm the host. With Ultras performing these bonds usually being in charge of peacekeeping operations, they are liable to find themselves being injured from time to time, and any injuries can compromise the protection the solid light body affords the host, allowing them to be harmed as well. With this in mind, we can only further thank these hosts for the good the Ultras have managed to bring to our world, and the way their battles against the Kaiju have saved countless human lives. And that's it for a speculative biology look into Ultraman. And man, what a fun process it was to turn this into more alien beings. Already a ton of their in-universe biology and workings are quite alien, and with light being a constant across all of their lore, the idea of doing something similar to what we did with Steven Universe's gems was something that came up often on our Discord server. I clearly loved that idea. So I decided to give it a go while giving it a twist more based on their canon versions, mostly by trying to make sense out of a lot of sci-fi terms with rather vague applications and meanings, but which managed to coalesce into something pretty cool. For the design itself, I mostly used the fact that giants made of light would have no concern for the actual limitations of greater mass, resulting in these massive bodies with a lot of avian and angelic inspiration, but also a touch of fishy and embryonic, just to tie with the way the actual Ultraman suit looks, while making the forms that were actually tied to a human being, or any other organism, adjust to their form in order to improve their social relations with the locals. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this app, but before we get to the thanks, I wanted to showcase these really cool artworks that show classic Superman scenes with our version of the character in them. The name of the artist is on the screen right now, so please go check their awesome art. And now, here's a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this episode, which was a lot of people. Look at them go! Thank you all so much for your suggestions and the cool ideas you gave to make this episode a reality. And also, thank you to our researchers and research associates who support us through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Remember, you too can join in if you want to support our channel. And you get some nice perks too, like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. Or you can also like, subscribe, or write a comment telling me any type of creature you would like me to give the specky treatment in the show. Any of those really help the channel a lot. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.